the last Tuesday of every month and the last <coughs> day of the month in this particular case. So welcome to you members of the public who have come along with uh, some interest in particular agenda items and uh, welcome to my fellow councillors here today. Um, firstly, would you please make sure your microphones are on in front of you and speak into them. We do get a lot of complaints from webcams that some voices not as strong as others are not coming across well enough on our webcam. So I just ask you to speak more clearly, please. I would ask for apologies, but I can see there's a full table. So being no apologies, um, I won't need a mover or a seconder for that. Turn phones off, please, including you, sir. Um, so I know we've got a couple of uh, agenda items of interest to particular people here today. So I may um, move the agenda around to suit. I know we've got... Capo senior citizens probably not here yet, are they, Shani? They are here. Are all the Capo citizens, senior citizens here that wanted to come today? A few more to come. Okay, you let me know when they're all here, and then um, I'll, I'll swap the agenda around to that agenda item to uh, suit you. And of course, I know we've got some people from Five Mile Bay here. So, firstly, I'll just um, again welcome you all here and officially open the uh, agenda and the meeting. And move straight away to agenda item number one, which is our last full council meeting held on the 26th of March, 2013. Before I ask for a move or a seconder, could I have any amendments, if there are any, please? Which are pages one through to to about seven. Any amendments or alterations to those minutes, please? It's quite good having webcam now because the minutes are very, very accurate because the minute taker can watch the webcam when she's doing the minutes. So uh, that's, uh, that's an awesome improvement for us. So a mover and a second, please, for those minutes. Move Councillor Crate and second to Councillor Downard. Uh, I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Carried. Any matters arising, please, of those minutes? Uh, Councillor Williams? Oh, just one on the uh, Turangi. Um Page, please. Oh, page one of two. Uh, the amendment requested by Councillor Henderson. Uh, oh, sorry, the um, request for more comprehensive non-financial reporting on the two really? town centre redevelopment. Um, has 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 there been anything? So page one of two. One by two. One by two. Down the bottom. On to that. Um, as far as written material, I don't think necessarily anything's been received, but there's been a number of site meetings, um, a working party set up to keep an eye on what's going on there, of which I've attended, I think, all bar one of the meetings. Um, as far as I understand, it's financially on track. There has been some issues with some cables that were found to be in the wrong place, um, which are necessitating some design changes to the landscaping and the visual look of it. Um, and council staff might be able to update councillors a little bit more on that. Councillor covered it very, very nicely. It's um, all on track, both um, financially and um, and in terms of time. Um, there is the one minor issue, which is is not a significant one. It's something that um, that happens in projects like this. You find a infrastructure you didn't know existed. Um, but yeah, it's all on track, and we'll be we are looking at um, the detailed design of stage two. Um, as we speak, which stage two involves a skate park relocation of the playground um, to near the pool area and um, some more physical works near the, near the entrance to the mall and within the, what we call the civic centre, which is by the, um, the library council area. So that's in its detailed design stage now, so all going very well. Okay. Council Williams? Oh, just one other resolution, um, Your Worship, on page one bar five, just to follow up and find out um, the response um, uh, that the Chief Executive Officer be instructed to investigate bring the management of the Taupo bus service back to the Taupo uh, region. I'm um, presenting on that uh, to Waikato Regional Plans. I will be presenting to that to Waikato Regional Council on next week. Uh, in person, uh, our submission to them to have the uh, running and the controlling, so to speak, one of a better word, of the uh, Connect the Bus Service in Taupo handed back to Taupo District Council, which they have the delegations to be able to do, should they wish to not um, not be parochial and uh, and hand it back to us. So I think we'll be far better off and far better served 
uh, by an in-house staff running a bus service than someone from Hamilton doing it. So, yeah, that's our annual plan submission to Waikato Regional Council's uh, uh, annual plan. As I say, I'll be going in person to Hamilton next week to do that presentation or submission. Councillor Quake. I wish to apologise to the whole council. I cannot move the uh, minutes of the last meeting because I wasn't at the last meeting, so I apologise for that. Did you move it a minute ago? Yes. Okay, sorry, we yeah. had seconded down, yeah. so uh, mover, Councillor Hickling. Sorry. Uh, you don't actually have to be at a meeting to move the minutes. Um, so that's not a problem anyway. Yeah, okay. Right, moving on now, please, to agenda item number two, uh, which is a, a, a cluster of... Uh, Minutes, which I think are unconfirmed, they are. Firstly, we'll start with uh, Taupo Airport Authority, which was on the 27th of March. And that takes you... Oh, I've got it wrong, sorry. Hang on, hang on. Yes, it is. Taupo Airport Authority is the first... Um, so, sorry? Yeah. Are there any amendments to those minutes? Councillor Johnson, who shares that committee with myself and others. Being none, uh, mover and a seconder, please. Move. Councillor Johnson, I'll second them. All those in favour? Aye. Any matters arising from Taupo Airport Authority Committee of interest? Councillor oh, Williams? Just the bottom of um, two, bar two, um, the action point um, uh, from uh, this response from Air New Zealand re re relating to the best way to maintain services in and out of um, Taupo with regards to the costs. You talk about the action point at the bottom of two bar two, uh, yeah. writing a letter to uh, John Whitaker at Air New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, that letter has been written. Uh, it's a very well constructed letter, mostly done by Mr. Menhenna and uh, Councillor Johnson, uh, pointing out that the, how important the air service is to Taupo, uh, how we would not wish to have any reductions, um, how we think going forward into the future, um, Air New Zealand will be better serviced by things we're doing at the airport. And things that are happening in Taupo, such as Department of Conservation moving 44 staff members into Taupo. Uh, they always seem to be in Wellington, so uh, that will bolster the service, certainly Taupo Wellington. So uh, we see the future as being quite rosy, for the want of a better word. Uh, and I think um, at this stage, it would be fair to say, Councillor Johnson, you can um, comment. I'd say it be fair to say that we've got a very good relationship with Air New Zealand, a very good service coming in, coming in and going out of Taupo. And uh, I think it'll be a long time before anything other than the status quo uh, eventuates. I'd have to agree. I think the proactiveness of the, the committee and maintain that relationship keeps us sort of on the radar that we are serious about our airport and, and to the benefit it brings the community. So. Okay, if there's nothing further arising from those minutes, we'll move now to... Councillor Truman's um, representative group, the Mangakino Poakani representative group. Are there any amendments to those minutes before I ask for a mover and seconder? Being none, could I have a mover, please? Move, Councillor Truman. Seconded, Councillor Hickling. All those in favour? Any, uh, any matters arising from those minutes, please? Any comment, Councillor Truman? Moving now to Emergency uh, Management Committee. Uh, any amendments to those minutes? They uh, go through to 2 bar 13. Move on a second, please. Move, Councillor Kirk. Second to Councillor Downard. All those in favour? Aye. Carried. Any, uh, any matters arising, please, from those minutes? Any comments from uh, the chairperson, Councillor Downard? Um, no, I've just got a, a letter back from... Um um, the Honourable Nikki Kay, um, just re a letter that we sent re the generators and talking about the rural fire um, being amalgamated um, nationally, um, our concerns on that, and also volunteering uh, volunteers um, funding um, for our volunteers to get trained. So uh, I've only just got this today, so I'll have a read of it and then I'll report back on it. So. Okay, thank you very much. And. One final one, Councillor Kepper's committee to Ringi Tongariro Community Board of the 9th of April. Any amendments to those, please? Being no amendments, I ask for a mover and a seconder. I move uh, with the recommendations and the uh, resolutions there, and the recommendation 5093 is the subject of an item for Council today. Yep. Right, and a seconder, please. 
Councillor Henderson. All those in favour? Aye. Carried. Any uh, matters arising? And I guess that matter is going to arise shortly, so any other matters other than that matter arising, please? Okay, no matter matters. Cool. Thank you very much. Moving now to agenda item number three, the Lake Taupo Protection Joint Committee. Uh, agenda item number three, any amendments or anything to adopting these minutes, please? Any amendments or anything? A mover. Move, Councillor Henderson. I was not at that meeting, but I'm happy to second it. Um, there's some good news in these minutes. Councillor Henderson, would you like to um, extrapolate on the very good news that was received at this particular meeting, please? Um, sure. The Joint Committee received the news that the Government had um, agreed <coughs> to grant the extra funding of um, approximately $3 million to complete the work of the Trust um, to remove 20% of the nitrogen reduction target. Um, pending this decision, Council here has previously agreed to release the funds that we've held in reserve and been collecting for the rate payer, and there needs to be some decisions made by Council around that as to the timing of that. Um, there is a workshop coming up with the trustees and the joint committee about that. Um, and I'm not sure about the timing. Staff might have some more idea as to when we actually need to decide that. Um, so that was really all that was to report out of it. But great news that the money's been received and real benefit to the lake and the district. I think. Thank you very much, Councillor Henderson. So um, the 20% reduction of nitrogen is now fully funded, even though it now I think it went to the scientists, nailed it down to 186 tonnes, 183 tonnes. I figure like that. One of those is correct. 386. Funding's in place and it is hoped by the Joint Committee that that project will be finished by the elections this year. So I think well done. Thank you very much. Uh, any other matters arising from that? Those minutes, please. Okay, there being none. Um, are all the people from the City Senior Citizens Club here now that wanted to be here? Still waiting for a couple? That's fine. And, uh, okay, we'll just move on. That's fine. So moving now, please, to agenda item number four. Pretty much a mechanical um, item. It's also our uh, existing contractor. Um, so um, we've got Mr Lewis here. If you would uh, like to take it as read and ask Mr Lewis of any questions, should you have any? Do you have anything you'd like to add to it, Mr Lewis? Oh, Your Worship. No, nope. pretty straightforward, isn't it? <coughs> okay, but it has to be okayed by governance, so it's a big contract. It's an existing contract, the existing uh, contractor, who I understand from you, sir, you can give us as governance um, some sort of uh, um, reassurance that it's a good contractor. We've had good service from them, right. so we don't need to uh, we don't need to dig much further than that, do we? Right. Any further questions? A question. Oh, just, just a technical point, Mr. Williams. Sorry, Mr. Lewis. Um, do you, um, I, I mean, it looks like a, a very good, very good result that you've achieved on this tender. But um, do you think, do you think there's any problems of um, fair and uh, fair and reasonableness in the tender process when the other tenderers, or well, the tenderers, were um, tendered on a five-year basis, but the winning uh, tenderer uh, has, has been selected on a seven-year. The tender document provided for alternative tenders, but the alternatives weren't specified. That was up to individual tenderers to nominate their alternative, providing they supplied a conforming tender, which this tender did. Um, okay, anything further? Questions of clarifications? I move. move. Councillor Downard, move. Councillor Williams, second. All those in favour? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Again, uh, Mr Lewis, you're in the hot seat, sir. Agenda item number five. Uh, Higgins Contractors for uh, Road Maintenance and Resealing. Would you like to take that as read? And no comments from you, sir? Very straightforward and my view, you wish it. And, of course, the suggested resolution is, if I may use my words, your recommendation to us. Any questions of Mr Lewis? Councillor Craig? Uh, Mr Lewis, can we ask you what's the situation between the, uh, the, the funding amount and what's spent on ETA and what's spent on Waiaki Drive and State Highway 1? 
how does that fit in with the tender? Tender allows for um, maintenance on Wairiki Drive and Napier Road um, when we take control of that. Which we don't know. We don't know definitely. for sure yet, but we've built provision into the contract that we will take control of it at some stage during that contract period and we've allowed for that. Councillor Downard, is it right in a slewer set they have to have it to a certain standard when it does get handed over so that should alleviate you know that it has to be a yeah. certainly the in the first few years the major cost will be associated with maintaining the street furniture signs, edge marker posts and vegetation control. All right. If there's no further questions of clarification, etc., to that uh, item, we'll have a mover, please, that the contract uh, for road maintenance free sealing, as submitted by Higgin Contractors, be accepted. Councillor Craig, move. Second, Councillor Johnson. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. Uh, Mr. Bowden, sir. Now, Mr. Bowden, for those who don't know, has been the uh, strategic project manager for the um, upgrading and the refurbishment works of the. Um, AC baths, which uh, this uh, triennium of governance found itself uh, uh, encumbered with. So, uh, Mr. Bowden, I see you have your uh, agenda item here for this uh, for this stage. I note that Watson and Hughes Limited are the contractors of choice that we've already been using. Yes, that's correct, Your Worship. Uh, so, do you want to extrapolate on anything, or just open for questions? Not really. The um, the report is as read uh, as per Council Resolution five one three four from. February um, council meeting, where we agreed we would only go to what's in use based on their experience and good performance on stage one work, so the indoor 25 metre pool. Um, just a couple of highlights. Uh, quantity surveyor's estimate was 2538146, excluding GST. The tender came in at 2523244, in other words, 16,000 less than the quantity surveyor's estimate. That's Good estimating and good tendering, in my opinion. Um, so I shouldn't be suspicious then. Yeah. <laughs> no. In a word, no. <laughs> We're all above suspicion. Um, so that's basically it. Um, we've achieved building consent for the design for the uh, stage two works. That's um, with me at the moment. So uh, it's just a matter of um, any questions. Any more information needed? Um, but more one for me, Mr. Bowden. Um, we, as a council, appointed Councillor Craig, Councillor Hickman, and Councillor Williams as a sort of a subcommittee, making sure that everything was, you know, we, we, it's got a lot of history. These AC baths, and we were trying to prevent becoming another part of it. What has there been any any involvement with you, your three more mini subcommittee in this item? No. And are you guys comfortable with it? Very, very comfortable yeah, with, uh, comfortable. with the contract. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any questions, yeah, Councillor Downard. I'm oh, sorry, Councillor Williams, Councillor Downard. I just um, probably separate, um, Mr. Bowden, just on stage one, the feedback from the finished product there. Now that it's open, have you had much feedback from the users? The yes, I have. Center? I have um, both internal uh, of the council and external as well. Uh, we have had positive feedback. The place looks a lot tidier. Um, of course, a lot of the cost of the project you can't really see because it's above the ceiling and the new roof. But I have had that the comments that the place looks a lot fresher uh, and a lot more, a lot cleaner, a lot more inviting. Um, so we have had quite a bit of positive feedback. What about um, like wetness in the place? Is that dissipating quite good now? Yes, yeah, I've noticed, uh, I've been looking at the external windows to the building, the new ones, where we've taken the air conditioning and pushed the air towards it. And uh, I've seen very, very little condensation so far. We've yet to hit winter, and I expect there to be some. But I looked the other day when it was a particularly cold morning and the baths were operating. Um, the air conditioning was going, and um, I saw very, very little indeed. And nothing dripping from the ceiling, uh, further to what was there before. So um, I think the internal environment is a lot more uh, healthy than it was previously, and uh, most definitely 
um, there's not the uh, risk of anything falling from the uh, roof, ceiling, and dropping on people. Mr. Byrne, just as an aside, I'm sorry, Councillor Craig. Just as an aside, when this project is finished, is this going to have a um, somebody that's got a, a a proper working manual of this place that does things daily, weekly, monthly, yearly to make sure that these systems are working and we're not, you know, heading towards another uh, a cliff again? Unlike the previous project about 10 years ago, we will have operation and maintenance manuals, as-built documentation, uh, warranties and guarantees, producer statements from suppliers, contractors and the consultants in a, in a compendium that uh, will be able to be used from a facilities management perspective. I think, does that answer your question? Yeah, I just didn't like that could be able to be used. I don't want to see no, that we'll, we'll be able somewhere, to be, you know. We'll be able to be yeah. used. At the moment, there's... Previously, there's, there's that type of quality of information was at best scarce. Yeah, I realised that and I wasn't going to bring that up, because, but that's why I brought it up the other way and I don't want to see that happening again. No, it won't. Councillor Craig. Uh, Mr Burden, can we just ask a snapshot uh, question? What's the attendance figures been like since it's been reopened? Are we up? I have no idea, no, to be honest no, with you. No change. No change. So, uh, and it was, never, it was never thought that it would be. Yeah. Sorry, Councillor Hickling. So, Andrew, if we accept this uh, tender today, when is the intended date uh, for the start of the works? On 6th the of May. 6th of May, yeah. That will be preparing the site ready for demolition and also providing a safe um, access for the users of the pool from the bottom of the staircase through past the private spa pool. We need to address that situation because around there there will be significant amount of demolition. So we are applying, or have applied for, I'm not sure yet, but we're definitely applying for a, um, a CPU for that so that we can continue the public to come down the staircase through a, a hoarded corridor, for want of a better description, with emergency lighting for uh, the public to still be able to access the indoor 25 metre pool. Okay, Councillor John, I'm sorry, Councillor Williams. Yeah. Um, I, I'd um, just like to um, you know, confirm that I think that Watson Hughes have done an outstanding job on stage one, I think, and, and with, worked really well with, with you, um, Mr Bowden. <coughs> um, just, I, I would recommend to Council, though, that in the interest of the um, the public and stakeholders that we continue the working party arrangement. I think it was a good conduit between on a, on a number of levels between the um, the public and and um, the project team, but also um, just just there for other councillors' benefit too. If they, if you know. So I would suggest that. I mean, I'm I'm not necessarily saying it's the same group, but that, that at least three councillors continue to take an overview. Um, and I think also another benefit of it has been that it's saved a lot of your time as well with mm. um, many people wanting to be briefed and to be assured that the project's going well, to... Unless there's um, any resistance from fellow councillors, I can't see why not. I'd like to see the existing committee stay there to the end of the job. You've been there from the start of the job. I don't like seeing chefs changing uh, 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 cooking stations until the steak's cooked. So I'd like to see you guys stay there and oversee this uh, to its to, to the end, including, as I mentioned before, that these produce statements, everything, that there's some sort of manual that somebody is responsible for. I don't care if it's daily, weekly, monthly. There's a certain things they have to check because it was sadly lacking in the past. And we're not going there. That's for the rear vision mirror. But going forward, we need to make sure that those things are in place to protect that asset. And it's a very, very valuable and expensive to run asset. And I don't need to remind anybody about that. So unless my fellow councillors have anything to say other than that, we will leave that as the status quo with you three on that uh, on that subcommittee, please. So did I have a mover for that and all that excitement? Move, Councillor Hickling, yeah. seconded Councillor Williams. Question. Just for clarification before we move it, the allowance of 150k, was that, there was there allowance in stage one of the same, roughly the same? 250. And did we go into that? We have gone into it, yes. Uh, but we haven't used the whole 250. So you've got a lower amount because you don't... I don't expect there to be uh, the quantum of variations that there were. The work done in the past. Absolutely. And some of the work, 
such as some of the seismic strengthening was added on during the course of the project, whereas it's included in the scope of works within that figure, tender figure now. Would it be fair to ask that if there was any necess necessity to get into that $150,000 next egg for unforeseen work, that we could be notified perhaps by emails as soon as possible so we're not kept in the dark, please? Yes, I issue updated cost reports at the moment to Councillor Williams, and I'm happy to issue that to anyone. All of us. Yep. All of us. Thank you very much. So that was moved or seconded. That was a question of clarification. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, are all the senior citizens people here that are interested in this next agenda item? That's a yes. Okay. We'll move straight on to uh, agenda item number seven. I see there's a lot of people uh, interested in this and it's, uh, I've taken it as read and to me it um, makes absolute sense and I'm sure it does to the rest of my councillors. Um, however, um, I'll open the floor up to Mrs. Rawley and uh, you can address us, and uh, if anybody else would like to say anything, they're more than welcome to. Ms Rawley. Um, this is a fairly straightforward procedural item. The senior sits wish to wind up their operations on the Tongariro domain and divest themselves of a significant built asset that's on council land. Um, Tapa Rotary have um, expressed an interest in taking on the ownership of the building and the ongoing management of it, and to do that they require a lease of the land. Under it, the existing lease to senior citizens doesn't allow for its assignment directly to Rotary. So what we're asking for permission for today is for the senior citizens to surrender their lease, to allow them to transfer their assets to Rotary, and for Council to give um, grant a new lease to Rotary for a term of 15 years. Well, it's pretty straightforward, and I know there's a lot of interest here, but is there anybody from Taubo Citizens Club would like to speak, or are you quite happy with where we're at? And, uh, sorry? And you're speaking for who? Yep, come forward, by all means. Please. You need to speak into the mics, it's not the flashiest uh, acoustics in the world in here. Oh, now I can see her. It's my good me? friend, Mr. Gordon Clout. <laughs> I couldn't see you down the back. Sorry, Gordon. <laughs> Is this on or not? Do we do uh, I can hear you. Okay. Um, we had the, uh, shall we say, the funeral service of the uh, senior citizens this morning. And um, I have been involved with the, uh, right from conception, 1972, and uh, that I, when I had my practice downtown. And one of my clients was Jim Hames. Who knows Jim Hames? He Great doesn't. Guy, isn't he? <laughs> and Jim won the contract and he was a client of mine and came to me and said, oh, Gordon, he said, I've just got the job for the Senior Citizens Club. Um, I'm building it. He said, in fact, I've just uh, a few minutes ago just written out an invoice for a progress payment on it. And so that's where I've come in and over the years I've been involved uh, mainly with the uh, auditing side. And uh, today, as I mentioned to the to the club that not to be glum about it. In fact, I, I asked them if they'd all put a smile on their face because out of death comes life. And uh, I see the, the uh, Rotary Club taking over as another phase in its existence and uh, moving on to great things uh, for the town. And I'm sure they will be um, a great help in um, forwarding the social work and the every other type of work that so, service clubs do for the community. And so um, I presided over the death today, but I told the members to be positive. Let's not be negative. There's so much negative uh, news in the papers and so on, and I made them all put a smile on their face. And I went around the room and all of them had a smile on their face. So um, I would commend this... Uh, uh, take over by um, Rotary to the to the councillors. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cloud, and uh, I'm not sure you don't mind me calling you Gordon. You always called me Rick since we met in 1971. <laughs> uh, a great person for the community you have been, and I think um, I think yeah, for for my point of view, and I'll, there'll be a couple of questions I'm sure and comments from um, councillors, but it is certainly another chapter in uh, uh, the rich life of that building. 
and I think Rochi are an ideal people to maintain it, look after it, and keep it available to all assets and, and um, places of the community to uh, hold gatherings, etc. So uh, thank you very much, Gordon. And um, yeah, I don't see any reason why anybody should be glum about it, that's for sure. Councillor Cook. Yes, um, I'd just like to um, personally thank all the members of the Taupo Senior Citizens um, Association for everything you've done for the community over the last 41 years, and I'd like to move the suggested resolution. Okay, I have a mover there. It doesn't mean we can stop not asking questions or anything like that. Question or second or both, if you wish, Councillor. I was going to just uh, endorse what you said. I couldn't think, without bias, I couldn't think of a better organisation to take it out. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not. <laughs> oh, you um, wouldn't be biased, would you, Councillor? Can, can I just have... <laughs> Yes, sir. Can I just have clarification on the ownership of the buildings? Because I think there's a little bit of craziness about this. The land belongs to us and the building yeah. belongs, the building will belong after today to the Rotary Club of, uh, what's the official name? Of Delpo. They have to maintain it, look after it and keep it open for public use. And this is for lots of We own the land underneath it and we need to give them a new lease to park their building on. Yeah. Legally, they, because the building is attached to the land, the building is owned, well, if it weren't for the lease, if the lease was to expire now, the building, ownership of the building would revert to council. It would become a council asset for council then to deal with, which is why we need to deal with the transfer of ownership of the building from senior citizens club who had ownership of it by virtue of the lease to Rotary, because we don't really want to own it. Thanks, sir. Well, very, very positive step for this beautiful community. So, if there's nothing more, was that a second uh, as well, Councillor Crater? I'll give you that honour being a Rotarian, second, yes, sir. Yes, I will second it gladly, yes. Especially a Rotarian with a poor fellow's uh, honour on your uh, on your lapel there, sir. <laughs> so, all those in favour, a resounding aye. Aye. Carried. Thank you very much.